goals, right? Say hi to YouTube. So I found this, I think two days ago or yesterday. And I was like, you know, like I've used most of the sticks on this list, except the one that I currently have on my lap that I was gonna test anyway. Like I, I ordered this last week and I finally got here, right? And I think that now that we're in the next generation of arcade sticks, it would be really cool to basically rank all of the previous generation arcade sticks. These are a lot of the non-custom arcade sticks that were very popular last generation. Going all the way from the Mad Cats Alpha to the Hori VLX, right? So that's one of the smallest arcade sticks to one of the biggest, right? There's some heavy hitters on here. There's a few sticks that I own. There's a few sticks that I don't own, but I have played on. And I think there's only two sticks on this list that I have never been able to touch before. Uh, but just from what I've heard about them and what I've seen about them, I think I can still put them in a tier comfortably. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave it exactly it is. We're going to leave it at God tier, high tier. Mid tier, low tier, and garbage tier. I should literally change garbage tier to trash. Like, throw it away. Garbage tier means unless someone gives you this arcade stick for free, don't fucking buy it. Unless you are a heavy modder and there is some stuff you want to do with it. Like, you want to mod it. Now, I will say that the main things about each arcade stick is price to performance, compatibility, portability, and quality of the build right those are the things that really matter so we're just gonna start with the f and it sucks that i, I kind of want to start with the more popular ones right so a stick that i used for a really long time was the mad cats te2 an xbox version i don't have the playstation version but the mad cats te2 and the te2 plus are very very similar to one another and for the price of 200 dollars, 250 dollars, if you were buying the TE2 Plus, I think, or $220. I could put it like top of mid tier. It might go up. It might go up to high tier. This arcade stick, it's like not the greatest quality build. It's an all plastic shell. Like the hinge system kind of sucks, but it like exists and it has a hinge system and it has a detachable cable and it was a PS4 licensed arcade stick, right? So like there's very good goods to this stick, but then there's also very, there's also bad to the stick. Uh, one of the things I really disliked about this stick is if you used it a lot, there was a, a like a, a panel on top that you could change the artwork under, right? That Ryu artwork, you could change that. And dirt and dust and grime and like skin would get stuck under it. It was like the grossest thing ever. And also that plexi like flexed. You could like push it down and it would sound like people were fucking. So, I mean, I guess depending on how you look at that, like you're like, huh, funny men make sticks that have sex noises. Like maybe you could put it in God tier, but I think it's fucking awkward for that stick to not be built better for being $200, $220 sometimes when it came to the one that was the TU2+. Uh, another really, really popular arcade stick last generation was the Combo Obsidian. So what I want to do is I want to be honest. I'm going to pause the music. I want to be honest. I used to own a Combo Obsidian and it is my biggest regret selling that stick. I have sold like four arcade sticks or three arcade sticks for this generation. And that is the one I regret selling the most. I don't even like the viewless layout. Right. My main stick is the Hori Fighting Stick Alpha, which I have behind me right here. And it has a noir layout. I love the noir layout, but the obsidian is just such a solid stick. Bro, honestly, if you can find an obsidian for like the price it exists at at two hundred dollars or cheaper than that, it, this stick is fucking god tier. If you don't need the PS5 compatibility, or as long as PS5 games continue to support PS4 arcade sticks, don't buy a combo obsidian. You buy the obsidian one. That stick is so fucking good. It's godlike bro it's got like the aluminum alloy side panels it's got the metal combo ball top sonwa buttons sonwa lever super nice like panel that like it looks so nice like it's one of those sticks that you gotta clean a lot if you have it but it also you can change out that artwork with a clear panel from focus attack and getting your artwork printed from focus attack or printing yourself and cutting it right uh has the the touchpad has the headphone jack like it's full featured and it is beautiful that is such a nice arcade stick i said the same thing about the pearl except for the fact that it's all white and doesn't have the metal ball top right the the pearl loses points for having a white ball top which is whack as fuck but it gains points for being the noir layout so i think both of these sticks are god tier the obsidian and the 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 pearl they are just if I could find a pearl for a reasonable price, I would I would have one. I would own one. I would I would love it. I would lay next to it in bed every night. Like the pearl is such a good arcade stick. And so is the obsidian. The next most popular stick from the PS4 generation, I believe, would have been the Razer Panthera. And I'm gonna be honest, I've never owned the Panthera. 
I own the Panthera Eva, and we have some choice things to say about that stick. But I want to put it in high tier. I think that the Panthera is just a better version of the TE2. And that's like the main reason why I don't want to put the TE2 in high tier. Because there's just a better version of it at the same price. Like the TE2 gets trounced by the by the razor by the razor pen there it's got like a harder body a harder plastic or a metal body it's got that same easy to access open up hinge system but with like like pistons or like a pump uh it has like a honeycomb design on the inside to make it really easy to screw in custom boards if you're changing out the motherboard on it it's got a detachable cable it's got the touchpad it's got the ps4 compatibility it's a really nice boxy arcade stick with a nice weight like it's so good it's such a good arcade stick. Just phenomenal. Next, another really popular arcade stick that's like one of the higher end arcade sticks. We might work our way down from like most expensive, maybe. I don't know, because there's some more expensive arcade sticks on here that we haven't even touched yet. Uh, the next like most popular arcade stick that I saw a lot was actually the Rap series. The Rap 4 and the Rap 5. The Rap 5 is a good stick. The Rap 4 is a good stick. I own a Rap 4. Okay, I'm not a hater. Like people... People live and die by this arcade stick. And honestly, I can't understand why. I love the rap. And I don't think it's a bad stick. But I also don't think it's like the most like amazing piece of kit on the planet. Like a small plastic body. You have to open it up. It doesn't have um, it doesn't have a headphone jack, right? Some some people don't need it. I don't need it. I'm on PC, but it is a PS4 compatible arcade stick. Oh, I think there was even a bunch of different versions. There was an Xbox version. There was a Switch version. Like, this this stick body was used so many times that it's hard for me to put it in low tier. It was pro it was proven to be a good arcade stick, right? But I think the placement of the start button, a little whack in my opinion. Uh, all of the, the touch panel buttons, all of the, the R, R3, L3, share, options, home, they're all on the side. You have to like feel around for them. And there was like a bunch of other switches and gauges over there for left stick, right stick, analog stick, turbo, macro, shit like that. There was just a lot going on on that stick. And they didn't want to put any of it on the front. Uh, the door also breaks all the time on those. If you have a Rap 4 and you still have the door on your Rap 4, you're actually a god gamer. I applaud you, bro. Like you deserve... Like, a $20 bill, a kiss on the lips, a pat on the back, some cuddles. I don't know what you deserve, but honestly, you're you're just, you're an arcade stick king or queen. Because you kept the door on your Rap 4 from when you originally purchased it. It is so hard to keep that fucking door on. And I think that it's, it kind of looks ugly once that door is gone, too. Like, we've gotten into an era where now people are 3D printing those doors and you can just get a new one. But that door is meant to break. And it's really shitty that they would sell the stick for, I think it was 140, 150 with such a crappy storage solution for the cable. Another stick that I saw a lot was the Mad Cats TES Plus. I don't think it's worse than the wrap. I think that the Mad Cats TES Plus is actually a better stick. It was like 129.99 or 149.99 most of the time whenever I saw it. It was not super expensive. All plastic body, shitty Shadow Lou artwork. No one likes the Shadow Lou artwork, let's be real. But it was a nice, solid plastic body. It was a hard plastic, one-piece construction. You could change out the top panel to put on artwork. Uh, it was pretty easy. It was, it was simple to get to the buttons. It had a nice amount of heft and a nice amount of um, padding on the back, unlike... Some other arcade sticks on this list. I think that's the one problem with the Obsidian. Just not enough padding. Uh, no no headphone jack, right? But what can you do? 150. I think it was like 140 or 150. Wasn't super expensive. But this stick was real good. This was a really good stick, especially for the money. I think that when you looked at the mid-range arcade sticks between like the Crystal, the Wrap, and the and the TES Plus, I think the TES Plus was just the best one of those sticks. Like, absolutely, wholeheartedly, 100%. I know people that still have TES Pluses. I know people that now sell TES Pluses upwards of, like, upwards of, like, you know, $200, $220, and they get sold because it's just, like, a nice, full-bodied stick with Sonwell parts. Comes with Sonwell parts right out of the gate, too, which is really nice. There's a, there's so many arcade sticks on here. Let me go with another mid-range stick, the, the, the Crystal. I think the Crystal is also better than the Rap. Right, the crystal comes with combo proprietary parts, but it's got a really nice body. 
It's got a touchpad. It's got all the features on a, on the top panel, but like off to the side on the top panel, just like the Q2 did. This is basically the PS4 Q2. Uh, it's got like the cool LED, the nice like mirrored kanji look with like a a very see-through plastic finish. Like it, it's got aesthetics and it's got weight and it's got good quality parts. Like they're Kanba branded parts, but I wouldn't have noticed that they weren't Sano parts if people hadn't told me when I tried the crystal. Like I'm like, oh cool, like look, can I use your stick? And I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. And I'm playing, I'm like, oh, this is a cool stick, this is nice. I'm like, yeah, dude, these are Kanba buttons. I'm like, what? What? These aren't Sonos? They're like, nope, they're not Sonos. They're like, you can change out the switches for Sonos, which is really cool because then you don't lose that, um, you don't lose the LED functionality. So I think for the 150 that all three of these sticks went for, I think this was perfectly serviceable right in the middle of all of these arcade sticks, which is really nice. Uh, not a bad stick at all. So, huh, you know, so I talked about price to performance. Sticks, These sticks all being in the 220 to, to like, 150 range and then being like really solid mid tier six that i i would say anyone could buy and say yeah this is like a nice quality arcade stick this is gonna be the first stick i put into low tier it is a 200 dollars arcade stick i own one i have a razor panthera evo the door fucking sucks the only nice thing about this stick is that it comes with razor mechanical switch push buttons that feel really good it's got a sonwell lever on it and it has a headphone jack and full ps4 featured support with a touchpad right and all the touch panel stuff is up at the top right so everything is very easy to access i like the layout of the stick now when i get into all the negatives of the stick is when i get pissed off about this stick every time i think about it the screws strip constantly if you are someone who mods your sticks if you are someone who wants to mod your stick there is like 80 screws you have to undo to get into the inside of the stick to get to the metal panel that allows you to change out your buttons and your lever well also still being connected on the side buttons and on the audio jack so you need to disconnect those without breaking them as you're opening the stick the artwork is very easy to change but that's it that's the only good thing about this stick this stick for 200 dollars is literally just a worse version of the razor panthera this stick fucking blows. It is $200 and it is an all plastic construction with zero weight to it and no friction strips. The friction strips are the worst friction strips I've ever seen on an arcade stick ever. I would recommend the Mayflash F101 to someone before I would recommend the Razor Panthera to someone. The Razor Panthera Evo. The Razor Panthera Evo is never a good stick at the $200 price. As a matter of fact, I'm talking so down on it, I want to put it in garbage tier, bro. If you get this stick absolutely for like 150 to 120 to 150 dollars, it's probably fine for the price. But at that 200 dollars price point, there is just way better and way more sturdy feeling and premium feeling arcade sticks that you can buy for that 200 dollars. Do not buy this stick at full price. Do not buy this stick above 200 dollars because it's hard to find. This stick is a piece of shit if you are buying it for full, full price. I said it. I aired it out. People like the Razor Panthera and the Razor Panthera Evo, but I think they equate the godlikeness of the Razor Panthera and also give it to the Evo, but the Evo is so much fucking worse. Like, it's legitimately just a bad product. I think it sucks. So I hope the Razor Katsune is good. I guess we'll just knock out the last Razor product. The Aatrox. And this is specifically the Xbox One Aatrox. The Xbox One Aatrox is a good stick. Uh, the Xbox 360 Aatrox, some people had problems with it. Sometimes it would die. Sometimes the board would give out. Um... You, it, you would get ghost inputs and things like that. But they really brought it home with the Xbox One version of this stick and the PS4 version of this stick, which is the Panthera. These sticks are both really solid. Once again, same features, basically, as the PS4 version. Detachable cable, opens up with the pumps, um, the nice center button. This stick you can actually change out the artwork on, unlike the Razer Panthera, right? Uh, because the Razer Panthera, it's like a glass panel. You have to, like, hot glue. Like, the, that it's hot glued. You have to, like, get a hairdryer and, like, pull the panel up while blowing it with hot air you don't have to do that with this stick this stick just has like four screws you undo and it lets you take off the the plexi panel and put artwork under which is really nice um i don't really have anything negative to say about this it comes with all sonal parts really nice construction hard plastic or metal body i'm i can never tell sometimes i'm like yeah this is a nice solid metal body and it just happens to be a super good hard plastic but this stick specifically really really good stick if you can find one of these for a reasonable price stuff that the atrox is going for low is like a hundred dollars 120 dollars if you can find one of these and get the firmware that'll let it work natively on a pc pick one of these up they're so fucking good let's see what else we got on here uh 
Should we just knock out all the heavy hitters? I think what we'll do is we'll put another stick in garbage tier. So, I don't know if I can... I don't know if in good faith I can put the Razor... I mean, the Mad Cat's Alpha in garbage tier. I think it's low tier. I think... Like, it's a nice little mod project. The buttons are soldered. But it has a stand. It has standard connectors for the buttons once you unsolder it. And then buy new wire or whatever, right? Or crimp the wires and put quick disconnects on. Uh, the buttons and the lever are trash, right? And the stick is a little overpriced, right? Uh, it was like $80 when it was brand new for being a six-button layout, but had PS4 support. It's very small. Some people like how small the stick is. I sold it to one of my friends on the premise that, first of all, I had already changed out all the innards so that the stick and the buttons weren't got, weren't trash. I put in Hayabusa's and a Sonwell lever, uh, and I changed out the wires so the wires would have quick disconnects. But... If you want a little mod project and you want to learn how to mess with arcade sticks and tinker with arcade sticks, first of all, this is like not a bad little project stick. Second of all, compatibility and form factor. Some people like how small this stick is. It could work out for someone. I can't feasibly put this stick in a garbage tier just because it's too small for me. Because it worked out for someone and it was a mod project for me. So there was two good uses out of this stick that I just don't see out of sticks in garbage tier like the Razor Panther. Uh, the Kanba Carbon? Honestly, I'm going to look at this from the eyes of a PC-only player. I think the Carbon is mid-tier. I would even probably put the Carbon above the wrap. I think the form factor of the Carbon, while also the weight, feels really nice in the hands. Uh, and it has enough, let's say, it has enough differences from the Wrap 4 that I prefer it over the Wrap 4 most times I'm playing on one of those two sticks, right? So, the start button is off to the side. You have all the touch panel stuff. You have all the main buttons over on the top left hand side it has stock con parts that feel very similar to sonos right unlike the high boosts which are very much so preference to some people some people hate the high boosts and the kuro buttons and the kuro parts but there's a metal plate under here this panel can cut the top panel can come off if you undo the screws and take off that and you can put artwork on it and it's easier to do that than it is with the wrap you have to like rip off that that graphic off of the wrap you're not ripping off anything like you can still keep that original panel if you need to um the connectors on the inside aren't soldered not even the usb cable connectors so you can do a detachable cable mod for something like this the door on this stick is actually still working unlike the door on my fucking wrap so like i said if you kept your wrap door working you're a god gamer if the if the door is working on your combo carbon still congratulations you're just like me for real this stick's door is fine right uh it's and it's a lot cheaper too so when when i'm looking at the compatibility from like a pc player side i would absolutely put this over the rap 4 i don't know if i put it over the crystal or the uh, tes plus because those are close enough in price that maybe i would choose one of those two body styles or aesthetic styles over the carbon uh, another stick i would put into mid-tier after trying the F101, I could see the I could see the Mayflash being mid-tier. The Mayflash F500, like the full-size one with the metal panel underneath, with the start button up at the top, uh, having PS4 support with the controller and the Xbox One controller so support with the controller, being able to change out the artwork. It has a it has a, a headphone jack that works with PS4. Like I could see the reasons for someone buying one of these or an F500 Elite. I get it. I'm not gonna knock someone for buying a meme flash right it's and they're nice little starter sticks they kind of make sense i think the closer you get to a, a full price arcade stick the less sense they make especially if you're only either on one console or pc or one console and pc uh you're better off probably buying something for the console that you're on and pc instead of like having to always look around a controller and plug the controller in and do all that nonsense it kind of makes a lot more sense instead to buy a regular arcade stick like a full branded one but, I mean, the Mayflash F500 is probably a solid enough stick. I think in that same vein, I would put uh, these both in low tier. But, like, above the Mad Cat's Alpha, for sure. For price to performance, I can't put them in garbage tier. Right? I think I think they're not great. Like, I don't think this is a, a great stick. But it's not a bad stick either. Right? Like, low tier means, like, it has some good stuff to it. But it's not great or even good like it's just okay especially for price to performance i think the mayflash f300 and the f101 they kind of make sense i don't even have a lot to say about them because i just talked about the f101 that's on my lap right here so it's totally fine let us kind of shift around right we're just going in order uh, i think another stick that belongs in god tier like rightfully so 
is probably the Itoki Omni. The funny part about putting the Itoki Omni in God tier is it's just two pieces of metal, fully resistant glass, and a Korean lever. That's all this stick is. The stick does not have a cable compartment. The stick does not have a touchpad. The stick does not have a headphone jack. But it is so easily moddable. You can mod any of it. Any of those things you can change. It has a brick board, but you can change it out to any other brick board. I think that this stick is like the perfect vessel for you to stick for to stick around for generations. A lot of other arcade sticks, they're they're fancy, they have a bunch of like cool stuff going on. But like over time, the membrane goes out on like your Star Trek Enterprise panel of buttons on the Obsidian, or all the side buttons on something like the Rap 4 or even the Hori Fighting Edge, right? Which I think is a godlike stick. Spoilers. But this thing is tried and true. This thing could probably survive a nuclear apocalypse, right? A nuclear apocalypse might happen, and someone might come out from the dust and the ashes holding an Itoki Omni. Like, and they're like, I will bring back the world with this one, with this one controller, right? Like, it's possible. It's truly that, it's that dude, right? When it comes to controllers, right? I don't think that, like I said, it's not feature filled, it's not feature rich or anything, but it's just a nice sturdy body and compatible with whatever you want it to be as long as you have the means to mod it um i think i stick the belongs in godlike or we're fighting edge look i'm gonna be really biased be really biased i think the fighting edge was the best stick of last generation i don't think it's the obsidian or the pearl i legitimately think that the best stick of the last generation was the hori fighting edge if you are a fan of the Noir layout. I forgot what the name of the layout was for a second. I'm so sorry. I had a brain fart. If you're a fan of the Noir layout, this is a way better arcade stick. That aluminum panel on the top, the nice slant. It's got the headphone jack right in the middle, right in front of you. The, the, just the form factor of this stick feels so amazing. The door doesn't feel like it's going to break. I've never had a problem with this door breaking. My obsidian, the door broke twice. I had to buy two replacement doors. Never had to buy a replacement door for my fighting edge. Fighting Edge has so much room on the inside for you to mod it. There's not a lot of like, uh, so, sometimes buttons, button caps, uh, button, like screw buttons, they get in the way when it comes to the Obsidian and the Pearl because the button is so close to the PCB. Even sometimes undoing the 2P button and the 3P button, uh, which would be the second and third top buttons, right? Sometimes those are too close to the board, so like it's very scary to undo even a a, a snap-in button. And that, that problem does not exist on the fighting edge. The fighting edge is... I don't know, man. Like, I, I spit about the obsidian, and I can't spit about the fighting edge the same way. But I think the problem is, I've just played on the fighting edge for so long, and I've talked about the fighting edge being so nice for so long, that I don't even have anything nice to say about it. It's just, it's that nice. It's It's... If you can find one for retail, if you can find one for 250, buy this shit. This shit is so good. It doesn't open up or anything, but it's just an amazing quality arcade stick. Another stick I think belongs in high tier. Like I said, this reason why I put the TE2 Plus and the TE2 in mid tier is just like all three of these sticks do the same thing, but better for a roughly the same price. And we can say the same thing about the Dragon. The Dragon right is actually more expensive. I kind of want to do this. I want to do that. There we go. The Dragon is more expensive, but it's still a better quality TE2, right? If you spend the $100 more, you get an amazing quality TE2. If you spend the exact same price, only in Europe, please, Nacon, please just ship me one to America so I can test the PS5 version of this. I promise I'll review it right. Now, the the, the Nacon Daija is basically a TE2 uh, when it comes to the weight, when it comes to the body size, when it comes to opening it up. When it comes to uh, the layout, because it also has a Vulex layout, uh, the innards, but it just has the quality of life things that the TE2 didn't have. So a headphone jack, it's got more of the touch panel stuff and it has it on the side, unfortunately. Uh, easier access to the artwork, better, um, better production quality on that top panel so it doesn't feel as if it's flexing on you. It's a really, really, really nice stick. And then the same things that I said about the Nacon Daija, twofold those, th twofold those for the Dragon, and say it's a metal body, but that it weighs a lot. I think the big thing about the the Dragon that keeps it out of God tier is just it weighs so 
fucking much. It's like a 13 pound arcade stick or something. Like, this stick is massive. It even has, uh, when you open it up, it actually has um, plexis covering the buttons and the lever bottom. So when you're putting stuff inside of your arcade stick, it's not rattling around, hitting the backs of your buttons, possibly knocking loose a connector or even breaking that solder point um, and knocking loose any of your any of the internals any of the guts of the joystick itself which is really really nice that's a super good way that i've never seen a, like a company really keep the insides of their arcade sticks that open up safe uh, i think that was a really really cool idea now we're on to more sticks we're on to we got like five left wow i'm gonna go ahead and put the combo drone in low tier i think it's probably the top of low tier though i think the combo drones it's a serviceable stick it's a nice like first arcade stick it's solid, right, in it, when it comes to price to performance, but it's not solid when it comes to the body. The body feels horrible. I think the Mayflash F101 and the Comma Drone feel very, very similar, except for the fact that the Comma Drone has, like, a nice, like, wrist-wrist area. It actually has cable... Pardon me. It actually has cable storage, right? It's in the front. Uh, when you open it up, you can get access to the buttons and the lever, and it, you have to do it with the six screws, just like anything else in this low-tier category. It comes with proprietary parts, stock parts, all of all the things in low tier. If, you, if we haven't noticed, they all come with n unbranded parts or Conba's own proprietary parts, which are usually not great. Usually not great. Um, and I think that the thing that keeps this stick in low tier but keeps it above the other arcade sticks is the fact that at least it's um it's mod friendly and compatible with a console natively, and is full size, right? It has a full size. There's no way we're listening to this shit. It has a full size um, panel, right? It's got all eight buttons compared to the six of something like the Mad Cat's Alpha, right? I think it even has more. Uh, it even has more friction strips on the bottom than anything else in low tier. So it's like the king of low tiers, but it's still a low tier. I think that. I can't not recommend it to someone as their first stick, but I think that there's probably better options if you if you got a few more bucks. If you got another if you got another thirty bucks, forty bucks, hell, even if you're not on console, and you can find a, a combo carbon, I actually think the carbon is better build quality than the than the drone. I think the drone is only more expensive than the carbon when they're both brand new, is because of the fact that this has PS4 compatibility. I think that's all that keeps it. Uh, down here all that keeps it from being better than the carbon is just they were like yeah we'll just make a worse stick but it's fine it has ps4 compatibility so people buy it and they were right unfortunately um moving on to garbage tier i'm gonna put the uh, uh, this stick sucks that's the fighting stick mini it's 40 dollars. it's basically like a controller those buttons are soldered they almost feel like membrane buttons the joystick is unbranded feels super loose I don't think that this stick is worth the $40 because when you think about other $40 sticks, right? Like a Mayflash, right? $40 or a Mayflash F300, which is like $50 or $60. When you think about those sticks that are very similar in price, when when you, when you choose to move on to something else, those sticks have resale value because A, you can swap out the buttons and you can swap out the levers so that if the stick feels brand new again and you can sell it for close to retail value, you're not going to get any money back on a fighting stick mini because it's gonna break and when something on the mini breaks it's not fixable really it's very hard to fix things on the mini and it's usually not worth fixing because everything's soldered and everything's proprietary and these buttons aren't even normal 30 millimeter buttons this stick is just too proprietary and too cheap i think to be a really really good arcade stick it's a nice intro level arcade stick but this is like i'm spending 40 dollars to find out if i like arcade stick and if i do when this when this stops being what I want to play on, I throw it in the trash and I buy something else. There's no resale value, really. Or I give it to a younger brother who's going to beat on it until it breaks. Or a younger cousin or a nephew or a niece who's going to beat on it until it legitimately breaks. And then I buy them another one. Or I buy them a smaller, nice arcade stick, right? Something like in Mayflash F101 or F, uh, F300. I think this stick really sucks. I don't think it's a good stick. And I'm going to say the same thing about the 8-bit, though, uh, in 30 if you're gonna buy the abito n30 why the fuck aren't you just buying a mayflash f101 f300 or f500 like this stick is actually redundant it's the same body as those uh but may but but a bitto and said before the original the new a bitto arcade stick that's its own body this is what they were using and i think this stick is fucking trash i don't think there's any reason to buy this stick once again unbranded parts 
same thing as the Mate Flashes, but it's only compatible with PC and Switch, right? At least the F5, at least the F500 and F300 have more compatibility and they are universal because you're getting basically the same quality parts. So you're getting more functionality with those sticks than you would get with something like the 8-bit though N30. I think that's what this thing was called. So it's going right in garbage too. I don't think it's the worst. I think that technically the I think this is the worst stick in in garbage tier is the the mini uh, we got three sticks left we got three sticks left that's pretty good i think the victrix belongs right here i think the victrix is like the best te2 clone it has all of the things the te2 wishes it was right it's a nice full aluminum cast um body it's got a headphone jack it's got a detachable cable it opens up really easy it's got really nice wire management and cable management. It's got a detachable lever right off the bat, right? Um, Sanwa parts, LEDs on the side, customizable LEDs, USB-C detachable cable, which is actually really important. That means if you ever break that cable, you can actually just buy the same kind of cable. You can just buy a C to C or a C to A, and you're off to the races, right? If you ever lose your cable, which is really nice. Oh God, Street Fighter 6 music, that sucks. This stick is really good. I almost want to put this stick in God tier. We'll see. I think bottom of high tier is the wrap in. The wrap in is a really, really, really good stick. The only reason why I can't put it any higher is because these other sticks are just more feature filled, right? Everything above it. You know what? I'm lying. So I think this is the real order. So then we can put it here. There we go. I think that's the ruler. We can put it above the Pantheras, the Panthera and the Aatrox, because it doesn't open up easy, but it has the Noir layout. It has a really nice panel. It has a covered start button. All of the, the buttons are off are up on the top, right? It has a lock feature. The, the body itself is super sturdy. It has a headphone jack. This stick is actually really slick. I have the Soul Calibur 6 version. I wanted a regular version of it, especially because the artwork that's already on it is very good, but you can change out that artwork too. You can buy an aluminum panel or you can buy a, a support panel plus a plexi panel, right? So you can change out that artwork. It's not even super hard to do either, which is really nice. There's just, there's so many good things about this stick. I, I cannot fault anyone for saying like, hey, I really want to buy a wrap in. Like the wrap in, at like $200 even now, which is what you can find it at. You can't really find it at the 160 or 170 that it was before. At $200, this is still a really good pickup. I don't I don't blame anyone for doing it. Whether it has the original Hayabusa parts on it, which I happen to like, or whether it has Sanwas now or Crowns or something else, a really, really, really good stick. I super duper like it. I, I'm gonna put the Vulix, because I think the Vulix is like a worse dragon. I think the dragon is absolutely better than the Vulix. Um, I'm going to put it top of mid-tier. Yeah, it's $400. But is it $400 of quality? No, it's just really heavy. Like, it had the Kuro buttons, and the, those buttons were ass. Like, yeah, you can change them out. Cool. But you're spending, 400, you're spending $400 on an arcade stick with shitty buttons and a shitty lever. That, you, you, see how, you see how that's already problematic? The door on this stick doesn't break, which is really nice. But it doesn't have a headphone jack. I think there was a version of this that had the touchpad. But this stick is so big. It's like 20 inches wide. The touchpad is on the front. So like it's like this wide and here's the touchpad. So you're like playing and then you're like, ah, you know, you have to hit the touchpad over there. If you're trying to reset in training mode, like it's probably perfect for like a home arcade setup. But when it comes to like being well-rounded, I think the I think the v, the VLX is trash. I wanted to buy one. I had like a large sum of money before at some point because I had got, uh, I, I get bonuses for my work. And I thought, you know, I should buy a VLX. I should just buy one, right? But then instead I thought to myself, it's, is it going to sit on my shelf or am I actually going to use it? And the answer I figured out was that it was going to just sit on my shelf as a collector's piece. And at that point, I'd rather just buy a dragon as a collector's piece because at least I would also use a dragon, right? And yes, I think the distinguishment of difference in tier is that far. I do legitimately think the dragon is like four sticks better than the, than the, the VLX. I don't think the VLX is all that great. Also shares that same shitty layout of the the view looks layout which is annoying and then it has the start button super close and on the top because it's trying to mimic the vl the the, the taito vlux machines right that was like their whole point was emulating that and they emulated it very well but they emulated it with dog shit parts and just being way too big that's just me this is all of the sticks on this list and 
I don't hate where I put things. Like, I think honestly, there's a world where we move the Itaki and we put the Victrix higher, but the Victrix just cost so much. I think the Victrix, uh, the original Victrix was like 350, and the new Victrix is like 400, right? They're really expensive. They're super nice, but everything up here just feels so much better in price to performance than anything here. That's like the main reason why things ended up in God tier was either amazing price to performance or amazing features. And in the case of the Obsidian and the Hori Fighting Edge, it was both. So I think there's probably a world where the Itoki Omni goes down and it's like here. And there's only two gods. There's just two gods to rule the PS4 realm of arcade sticks. The last generation of arcade stick realm. And I think it's the Hori Fighting Edge and the Kanba Obsidian slash Pearl line. I think those are the best arcade sticks from last generation. And it's not even close. I don't, for price to performance, for features, for modability, for basic use, I I don't think that, that anything comes close to these two at all. Not even close. Some people would be like, dude, but the Victrix. And I'm like, and the Victrix what? At $350 compared to 200? Okay. Cool, it has a nice detachable cable that you can mod in yourself. It has a detachable lever that you can mod in yourself and it'd be better because you wouldn't be using the shitty ass Link 2. You'd be using a Link EX, the, you'd be using the Link, the Groove, right? So you can actually put whatever bath top you want on it. Yes, you guys just saw a cat. That was not a rodent. I don't have possums in here. It was, it was Remy. She may as well be a rat, I'm not sure. But yeah, this is my, this is my rankings for the arcade sticks from last generation from the ps4 generation ps uh, and xbox one generation of consoles i think that there was a lot of good sticks this generation honestly i think i wouldn't fault anyone for buying anything low tier and up if you bought something in garbage tier i'm sorry i wish that i had made this list prior and you had consulted this list before you bought one of those really dog shit arcade sticks and i'm gonna be real with you i made the same mistake i own a razor pen there evo and that is why i'm so mad at that arcade stick i think it fucking blows but this is just my opinion. Of course, everyone's opinions on things differ. A lot of people probably wouldn't put the fighting edges aside. A lot of people might have put the TE2 as God tier, one of the greatest sticks to ever exist, and I just don't think so. I think it's Mario in Super Smash Brothers, right? It's perfectly mid-tier. The game is balanced around it or whatever. Maybe not recent ones where Mario is really good, but the old one, you know, like Melee or something. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you enjoy this style of content, like the video subscribe to the channel maybe we do more fun videos like this uh i've been lazy on youtube content you guys know me i only put out a video like once every two weeks or something and they're completely unedited because of course they are why would i waste time editing because that just gives you guys more to watch if i don't anyways it's been being thuggish for the youtubes signing out and saying peace